So the full ending song of Mars Red, On My Own by Hyde, has been a release, and holy shit, if I couldn't even love the song enough with like the min half they've given us with the anime, the full song makes it all the better. Definitely check it out if you haven't already. Now, an interesting thing happened when I went up to watch Mars Red this week. I personally watch in the Japanese audio with English subtitles. I have heard the dub for it, and I was like, wow, that's actually a pretty good simul dub. Funimation must really enjoy it. I mean, I think they are partially responsible for the production of this show. And something happened where, like, at least as of the recording of this, the Japanese track just wasn't on their site, so even if you were trying to torn it or anything, you were getting the English dub. Luckily, the English dub for this show is actually good, so it wasn't like I had to bear watching this show. It was still a good ride. There was only, like, the voices for some of the high-class society vampires that were a little weird in the English dub. But I think I honestly heard Suzaku from Code Geass from its English dub in this show. So honestly, it was a perfectly fine watch, even though personally I still prefer the Japanese. But this is without a doubt a show that gets better almost every single week. I would argue this is probably like the second best episode. I could easily see people maybe even arguing it's the best episode. You introduce so many twists and turns and from the concept of high society vampire life where you have these very preppy, very rich vampires who just, you know, have a new plaything every single hour by the looks of it. They treat their butler like shit. Instead of champagne and wine and things like that in the ice, they have vials of blood. It is such an interesting concept and usually with vampire stories, it's simply, you know, creatures of the night they hunt. But naturally, vampires, the thing that kind of makes them interesting is that most stories write them as they still have human intelligence and at times are even more intelligent than humans. So to have like rich class society of vampires like makes total sense that you would have more slum vampires who just are feeding in the night. They're that natural creature on the prowl. But then you have these rich preppy nobles who treat their butler like shit and just grab any random Joe and have their way with them by feasting on them and torturing them to death. It's very interesting how Mars Red takes the concepts of vampires and actually rolls with it better than I've personally seen in most vampire stories out there that aren't at least novels. Because you do get that type of stuff in a lot of vampire novels, which is really nice, but you really don't get to see something like this with this amount of attention to detail. With also that obvious, thank god the butler did turn on them because how the hell would he put up with that for so long? And then by the time our boys come in to kind of sound the alarms, they're using their stink bombs, they're slicing and dicing, everyone's already dead in there. As the true threat is just kind of on the prowl and you have basically what is seen as zombies. As you have machine guns blasting, trains hitting, it was absolute chaos and they turned an episode that was by all rights slow into one of the most explosive, if not the most explosive episode we've seen, especially when literally armies of Iron Man are just kind of marching down the streets, clobbering with a mace as the true vampire unit has been unleashed. The colonel in this show who promoted Maida and things like that, I never thought I would see him pull a gun, not only pull a gun, but also shoot someone who basically is saying, no, we're going to use this other country's unit, we, you've been defunded, I thought I had until the end of the year, you have the end until this month. So in doing so, he unleashes his secret weapon that are completely destructive. A single one of these units seems to be more deadly and more capable than the entirety of Maida's division. Honestly, if you saw that wandering the streets, I don't know what your thought would be. And are they actually going to be able to differentiate between human and vampire? There's some weird shit going on here. And I think a character who I thought I could very well trust has me a little on the edge of my seat because while I understood he was very devoted to the mission, I never thought we would see something like that. And I'm wondering, is Maida going to be switching fully to the dark side or is what's happening on the streets something not to be worried about? Like, there's a lot of things happening and it feels like based on the power we saw of that division, sure. We haven't seen a high class vampire go up against it. Maybe they are just big walking hunks of metal that are slow. They have a hell of a punch, but that's all they got. But at the same time, I don't know, like, it feels like the entirety of the Code Zero division, they wouldn't be able to do shit against a single one of those, it feels like. And even if they could, it's not like you're sending a single one out by itself. These humans were drinking blood before the battle, there's like an army of them. What the hell are you supposed to do? The one thing about someone like Midas' division is that these vampires, they look and act like humans, so it's very easy to blend in with the common folk and not raise awareness. These are a completely different beast that look like the end of the world is upon you. If the four horsemen had an orgy, this is basically their demon spawn that came out, right? Absolutely insane what they're able to accomplish in this episode. 
the simple idea of the love letter, basically, which, you know, has Maida feeling a bunch of things, finally getting him to go to the theater to kind of talk. Mars Red is almost like two different stories. There's that classical theater story of all the drama and intermingling relationships from reporters to vampires to lieutenants and things like that. But then you have this military story that is without doubt the most interesting aspect, but because you have that extra human element, it doesn't make it feel like a mindless vampire slaughter fest. You have the military, you have this story about, you know, wanting to defund them, wanting to shut them down, use a different division, use a different country's military, as you have this old school way of thinking. It gets said in this episode, it's been decades in the making, so it's understandable why he has such a powerful army at his fingertips. And should he say, you know what, I don't care about the government, it feels like who the hell can stop them other than maybe Midas Division and things like that. But then incorporating all those personal stories in those slower moments. Mars Red definitely has moments where it kind of goes to a snail's pace, but it lets you connect to the characters, feel their emotions, and get time to understand them. So by the time, you know, it looks like our mad scientist is about to get killed and a freight train comes in and kills them, you know, we realize the pacing is about to pick up, and once again, we like the characters on a personal level, so it's not just mindless action or a mindless slaughter fest like you probably think you would see, especially if you were to clip some of the vampire action. I'm sure a lot of people say, oh, it just looks like this one vampire anime probably doesn't have any soul, right? No, it definitely has soul. I have seen some people actually say, though, that the widescreen aspect of it, it kind of takes them away from it. And I'm usually in that same boat, you know, I'd rather just have it full screen. I mean, we're not in a theater, most of us aren't watching on this giant ass TV that kind of makes it feel better. But because of the more theater and kind of like storytelling approach that it's very familiar to that of a script that people would read on a play, a stage play, which is the adaptation that this is, right? I think it works really well because it never lets you kind of get comfy. It always makes you feel like we're watching something a little more artsy. It's something that's supposed to not make you predict things in traditional anime sense. It's very easy for us to get comfy and know what to expect. It's very easy to predict what's going to happen in anime more often than not, because once you've seen enough, you can kind of see where everything's going to go. But Mars Red, it's kind of impossible to predict in the traditional sense, I feel like, because there's always something different happening, whether it's the way they frame a shot, whether it's the way they explore a character, or, or even how complex they go into the vampire society lifestyle, and it's not just creatures of the night hunting down humans. There's actually societies being made and they do function like normal people, just instead of wine, they drink blood on the side. Definitely one of the highlights of this season. I think it does get better every single week. I'm not sure exactly what I would place as my favorite episode, but it would be at the very least, this is my second favorite episode, given how the back half of this episode just kind of shakes everything about the military story that I thought I knew, while also having me unsure of where Midas' story is actually going to go going forward. But as always, let me know your thoughts and feelings down below. What did you think, and where do you think the military story is going to be going? Do you think, like, the divisions are still going to be working together, or is it going to be kind of like a rebellious thing where the Code Zero division is going to just kind of push away maybe try to overtake them. I don't know, like there's a lot of different ways this could go very, very south. But at the same time, I feel like I wouldn't be surprised if we had a couple of episodes where either A, they haven't been assassinated or attempted to be assassinated, or at the same time, maybe haven't fully decided to jump ship. But I feel like we're getting to that point pretty soon. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, share your support, and hit that subscribe button if you're happy new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.